really. I'm not a stalker, uh, by the way. I'm not going to follow you <laughs> at your favorite places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I see you every time in my coffee shop. Then. <laughs> Hi. This is the official Leeds United podcast. So, without further ado, please welcome to the show or back to the show uh, our old friend Robin Cock. How you doing, mate? Hello, hello. Yeah, I'm good. Good. Thank you. Um, you've just uh, you just come out of training and had a bit of lunch. Uh, how's that? How's that gone today? Yeah, good. So we had the first session today. Um, gym seven straight after, and uh, yeah, like you said, Noah just come come from lunch to yeah have a quick chat with you. <laughs> well, we we appreciate it. Um, we might as well get 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 straight into this year, which obviously has been. Has been difficult. Um, what, what are your thoughts on 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 this year so far? Yeah, obviously it's a it's a difficult uh, season for us. Um, I mean, um, we're in the relegation battle now and um, in not an easy situation. But um, yeah, so it's quite a hard season for a lot of clubs because it's so so tight down there and um, there are many teams in there. And um, yeah, that's the situation now. And um, yeah, we. We have to make sure we go go through this time and um, yeah, stay in stay in the league. That's a big goal. Rom, you're just talking about the the season so far. It's been a big transition um, lately, with obviously a new manager coming in. I was at Leeds in 2000. Well, joined 99 till 2005, and towards the back end of my time at Leeds United, we went through three managers um, during a spell of a year and a mm. bit. So it was you know getting used to the new formations, the new tactics, the new systems. Um, how, have you, how have you managed? Uh, how, have you, how have you enjoyed that transition? And, and what's your thoughts on on the new the new manager and the, the staff that have come in? Yeah, obviously it's never never good um, when a when a coach has to leave or when there's a change. Um, so um, yeah, the, we as a player we had to yeah we had to adapt and um, I think it it worked quite well. Obviously, it's um, every time hard. The, like you said, the switch and um, the new new things uh, to adapt for every player and as a team but um, yeah we try we try as hard as we can as a team to to get the uh, information from the coaching staff on the pitch off the pitch in the video session um, and yeah uh, the, the coaches is, is making sure that everyone is understanding his um, his way to play and um, yeah like I said it's it's different so sometimes on a training pitch and where yeah explained or even with one we so one to one session with a player on the pitch or yeah after the training or before training in the video sessions has there been anything um that's changed uh drastically at the back um because we look you know over the last few weeks have looked much more solid um you yourself have been having some great performances as has, has anything changed drastically uh, at the back um for for you guys for for yourself and max and and, and the rest of the the defensive team I think it's uh, so we maybe a bit more more secure because we're not like that um, aggressive in every ball and want to counter press every situation. So we're a bit mm -hmm. like I said, we, we're quite good in this, um, but we are not going for every ball. So even yeah, I think our strikers and uh, midfield have now a good um, good feeling when to go and maybe sometimes it's better when to stay and not run alone. Yeah, out of out of possession basically, and um, um, yeah, and press in a situation where it's better to stay in the formation. So I think we're doing yeah, definitely defensively quite quite well as a team, and obviously it helps um, it helps us in the last line, um, especially Max and me as a centre back. Matt, you must have been doing your coaching badges, mate, because you've made a good analogy there, Matt. You've you've picked up on that and put the question over <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, to, to I'm Robin. Been, yeah, I've hopefully been studying. I've, I've, I've had a few, <laughs> few more years to, to get into a coach then. <laughs> you stick to what you do, Matt, and that's the acting, right? Don't get around right, this okay. technical side well, of stuff. See, I, pret yeah. I pretend I know what I'm talking about, you see. That's no, the I thing. Mean, that was absolutely spot on. <laughs> but um, like you've just said there, Robin, I, I, I do see that um, obviously you know when and when and why to press and obviously when to sit off to uh, to allow other things to happen. Um, Max Vorber coming in, um, I think you've built up a very good relationship with him. Has, has the communication gone gone up a new level with, with him being involved in the team as well? Um, yeah, obviously he's uh, quite a good, good player and... Um... Um, yeah, so we have many, many good players and uh, many good centre backs as well. 
but um, yeah, bringing him in is another another quality player, and um, he adapted well, well in the in the team, and um, yeah. So for me, for me, um, the games I played with him were were really good, and the understanding is really good. Sometimes even we speak a little bit German, so well, that's <laughs> well, what we were thinking. Um, maybe, the well, but... <laughs> maybe the language barrier is a bit easier for you. You know, that's that's one thing that yeah, a lot of the... but I, I'm. I'm more than two and a half years here now, so now it's fine. He, he should come uh, in my first year, maybe. <laughs> I'm, cur- I'm curious when you're on the pitch, because obviously it's it's reflexive. Everything's got to be quick and, and, and you've got to yeah, get yeah. the defensive line organised. And I don't know how good Bill and, and Junior's German is, but do you speak English on the pitch <laughs> or, do you, or do you and Max speak, yeah. uh, speak German? No, I speak so most of the time English, but sometimes, like you said, it's reactive, so... Like a striker is running, then you're shouting just, yeah, instinct like it's right. your instinct to to shout something, and then sometimes uh, I shout something in German to him. But uh, yeah, most of the time in English, and especially with all the other players uh, speak English on the pitch. Listening on together. What about the Brighton game? Um, obviously, the, I thought watching the game, you know, the first first few minutes of the match, the the very well organised team. Um, you could see they they understood the moments when they had the ball, when they didn't have it. But obviously, we found a way to to counteract that in the end and got a fantastic result. So, how did you feel that game went? Yeah, so we knew before, and um, we we had video sessions and prepared obviously the game um, with the with the coaching stuff, and we knew that Brighton is yeah one of the best teams with the ball at the moment in in the Premier League. So they're yeah, really well organized uh, style of playing is um, yeah different to any other team in uh, yeah at the moment, and um, we knew they're they're really good, and um, we knew we have to have to suffer a lot because it's hard to to get the ball away from them, and um, on the other side not open up because when mm. you press them quite high, they still have four players on the last line and yeah. often look for look for transition then, and um, yeah they're really dangerous with the with the players in front and we knew that before and um, yeah so exactly like this was the game then in the end so we had to we had to defend really well as a team we had to suffer sometimes and uh, go through this this uh, times in the in the game and um, yeah in the end we we got one one point out of this game against a really good side I think what's the, what's the feeling in the camp on that uh, on that point because it, I've I've been racking my brains over the last few days to to, to kind of figure out how I feel about about that point, and I th- I thought it was fantastic. I thought yep. against against that Brighton team playing the way they they do, I thought that was a yep. really well fought and well earned point, um, and I thought everyone played their part in it. Um, that said, obviously in terms of the league position with Everton and Bournemouth freaking wins um it's not been as, as good as we would have hoped so what's the feeling in camp about that point is everyone still no. buoyed by it and ready ready for next week yeah so if you ask me after the game i would probably my uh my how do you say result would be completely different because ah uh, and uh yeah the team was like disappointed after the match we felt like we could we could win this game even we knew they're quite good and um obviously they had chances as well but Right after the the game in the dressing room, you could feel okay. Everyone is uh, yeah a bit disappointed. We we wanted out three points, and we thought okay we could get three points as well. Then um, yeah, the coach spoke to us and said um, yeah every point counts now, and um, this is a really good point against a really good side. And now um, yeah. A few days later, um, it feels a bit more like, like you said before. Um, yeah, we got one point again, really good, good side. Obviously, the the other teams got points as well. So, um, yeah, that's how it is now in the in the relegation battle. But um, yeah. now the focus it? is on the next next ne- next match, and we can um, get positive things out of this game. And there's the focus now. Yeah. Do you know what it is, Matt? I haven't seen the. Obviously, the lads would have been working all week on training to. Because I love the little block of four up front to stop the midfielders getting on the ball. And I was sitting with a lot of the fans who were saying, just press, press, press. And I'm trying to say, yeah, you know, they've yeah. worked, they've worked, the team have worked on something. They're not, they don't want to break the lines. Yeah. They've got to do it. So, what's really refreshing is that the players getting results against Southampton, the team are getting result, a result against Brighton at home. They're buying into what the manager is obviously putting out there. 
and to hear that the lads are disappointed with a draw at home that's that's so refreshing to hear and so rewarding so the fans are you know to hear that our players are disappointed is absolutely magic because that's that's positive mm-hmm. signs well, I mean, uh, this, this is a team that, that dismantled West Ham 4-0 last week. Let's make no mistake. Yeah. This is a very good team, and, and, and we stood yeah. up to them. So I, I, was, I thought it was a great point, personally. All Leeds, aren't we? The official Leeds United podcast. Now, Robin, I was a man at Leeds United that had many, many injuries in my time here, right? I was known as the sick note. I've actually got a plaque <laughs> on one of... I've got a plaque on one of the um, treatment tables. Most players get statues outside the ground. I've got a plaque on a treatment bed to say Michael Bridges was here. You've had a few knocks during your time at Leeds United, mate, but now you're having a lovely spell, injury-free. So um, how, how are you enjoying that, mate? And what, what have you done to, to keep on top of everything? Yeah, so obviously um, after my two big injuries um, I had in the first two seasons, which is yeah hard for every player. So I mean, if you're not able to play, it's the hardest thing for a player. So yeah, I worked hard in this time when I was injured to come back, and um, now I'm working exactly the same way to stay healthy and stay um, on top of every injury. Obviously, sometimes injuries happen, you can't do anything, but... Yeah, I try to put as many work in um, as I can to to stay fit and stay um, yeah on on the best performance um, and yeah be be in the best shape to to play every every week. Well, I mean, it's clearly it's 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 clearly uh, impacted the form. I mean, uh, that that those run of games that you've had. Do you feel that that's that's helped you settle? I don't want to say settle because you've been here for years now, but. Your form in the last few months since you've had this run of games has been has been exceptional. Have you felt that just finally having this consistent run at the team has been really beneficial? Yeah. So obviously, when you when you injured and um, been out for like three four months and come back, so you need some time to to come back after injuries. And then I got injured again. So like my first two years weren't so easy. But now, mm. um, yeah, I'm been able to play week for week and uh, feel good about my body so um, obviously that's the most important for every player to to stay fit and make the games and then you can um, yeah then you can um, show off your quality because when you are not fit or like every time with small injuries or coming back from an injury it's hard to perform f- perform on top level do you know it's tough as well Rob and I remember the first couple of games back after I was out for seven months and it was in the reserves and yeah. the, an, the anticipation yeah. and the worry about going in for a tackle or just doing something where you, you might find yourself on the treatment table. It's all about gaining that confidence once again, isn't it, to get a few games uh, going? Uh, yeah, it's, all, it's, it's always in the back of your head when you come yeah. from an injury. And uh, obviously you want, to, you want to stay fit and want to play and uh, bring good performance. But um, yeah, especially when you come back after a longer injury and... You're a bit um, so not hundred percent sure. Or you go into the tackle, or um, yeah, don't want to get injured and stuff like yeah. this. But if you play games after games, you feel you feel secure again, and uh, yeah, you can perform. Because the, the body and... can the body can feel good, but this can be a, a the brain is such a positive yeah, thing, but yeah, it would be yeah. such a dangerous thing as well at times. Well, yeah, yeah. especially yeah. when you you That's... keep getting smacked in the head. I mean, how many head injuries have you copped for this season and last season? I've got to admire your commitment to keep sticking your head in there because you you keep catching some, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I got some uh, some scars now on my head, so ho- hopefully I never got bold. But uh, yeah, so now it's fine. So I only got the one one little cut here. You can see the rest is uh, yeah it's top, top of the head. So. If, I'll no tell you what, there's, to cover it, yeah. <laughs> there's not many centre halves have had as many knocks as Robin has and still look as handsome as he does. I know. Right? A lot of them have got <laughs> the, the noses are normally bent across the face and everything. So keep an eye on that. <laughs> Listening on together. I want to know about Leeds City Centre because I, I loved it when I came down here. So, what's your favourite places to go in Leeds City Centre for food, <laughs> to the family? Now you, you have put it? him on the spot. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. I can't really. I'm not a stalker, uh, by the way. I'm not going to follow you <laughs> your favorite places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I see you every time in my coffee shop. Then. <laughs> Hi. Uh, no, I, I really like uh, city center. I, even I said that even before. I love it. Just um, yeah, 
even when friends are here uh, for for visiting and just my family is here and that they, they they love it as well so um um just yeah walk to the city center obviously some fans come and ask for a picture but they're always always nice and um yeah supportive and yeah so I have quite a few places um where I go because I I like to uh, go for coffee um I would say North Star coffee is quite good for me and um Basco's There's a couple of free coffees coming good. his way now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he got the, he got the <laughs> yeah, plug hopefully, in. Ho- hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> because I was, a, I think I was a no, Greek, quite, Greek Street. Quite a few places. I enjoyed the Greek Street down there. There was a lot of good restaurants down there. Um, yeah, I've, I haven't been. I think you're, da- I think you're dating yourself there, Bridgie. That's, yeah, uh... I've dated myself big time. It's probably closed <laughs> down now. It's probably closed down nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you find? I mean, I suppose Germany's not too dissimilar, but um, how do you find the weather this time of year when you're having to step out on Ellen Road pitch in the freezing cold after it's snowed and that? <laughs> yeah, that's the right question for the last few days. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So it was snow, next day was 15 degrees and sun. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, had, um, I had friends over from, from Germany and um, I said, yeah, you know, the weather here is not bad. But it's just different three times per day. So we started yeah. with snow. Then, um, yeah, next day was like, pff, like you imagine weather in Spain. It was 15 degrees and nice and warm. And then today was raining again. So, yeah. <laughs> who's who's <laughs> the least now, keen but, um, at Thorpe Arch? Who's the, one, who's the last out of the changing room when it's, when it's cold? Who doesn't want to go out and train? It's cold. The last, I would say... I don't know if it's uh, because of the weather, but most of the time it's uh, Creo Vili. <laughs> oh, okay, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> could be, uh, could be, uh, could be uh, because of the weather as well. Yeah. <laughs> the training ground, obviously, this week you've said is very cold, but the preparation going in for the the remainder of the season, but mainly this massive game coming up against Wolves um, before we hit the international break. What's what's the um, what's it been like? What's the preparation been up to? Yeah, obviously, like like you said, it's a massive game for us. And uh, yeah, so we we try to get all um, yeah all our players back together. I think we have quite a uh, yeah f- few few players coming back from injury as well. So like Rodri, Pat was out a few few days. Uh, Luis is back now, so it's good to good to have them all back now and um, back in training and um, for the games, obviously. And um, they all played a little bit on on the weekend, but um, yeah, now it's um, it's about getting getting them back into the team, into training, and prepare prepare the the best for for the weekend again. And we you know after that it's like it's a national um, team break, and um, yeah, so we we put everything into to this game, and yeah, then after that we have a bit uh, more time to the next game. That was one of the big things for me, looking at the team sheet at the weekend against Brighton. You know, all the talk about how strong the bench was as well. So comp- competition for places now, mm-hmm. you boys will be th- thriving on it. Now, as a player, I, we used to embrace that. So obviously you guys, it keeps you on your toes, doesn't it, to want to keep that spot in the eleven. now. We've got such a strong team and everybody's fit again. Yeah, uh, yes, it's brilliant for us to, to get everyone back into the team and into training. So... Um, yeah, like you said, it's, it's good for everyone to, to push their own limits and then uh, even push the team limits and um, yeah, even getting strong uh, players from the bench. So we have we have enough quality in the team and um, yeah, it's great, great to have everyone or nearly everyone back now. I know we've got uh, an international break coming up and there'll be several players going off for, for those games. But um, with a new manager in, how, how crucial could it be to have that break and try and get his ideas instilled still further? Will that give us, uh, will we benefit from that break, do you think? Yeah, like I said before, so we have a massive game now on the weekend and then after that we have like a bit more time. So one week without without a game to prepare like a, and then you have um, obviously more time to to work on some things um, he want to to get into the team and um, yeah I think it, it will be good for us to and for him as well to to have like a week without a game and uh, we are the, the pressure and preparing the game on the weekend so yeah I think um, will be will be good for us this is the official Leeds United podcast 